And also, good evening all. Innovation distinguishes between a leader and a follower, says Steve Jobs. At GIBS, we say performance is reality. But for that performance, we need to master many things. In order to inculcate this, GIBS has introduced a series of free national and international level webinars, leadership talk series, and panel discussions on trending topics called Jib Spreading the Light of Knowledge. Today's international webinar is special. And you know what is special? It's a new milestone. Happy to share that this is the 350th leadership talk series of Jib Spreading the Light of Knowledge. So we cannot, you know, virtually we can clap. Okay. Through GIBS, you know, that is Jib Spreading the Light of Knowledge, webinars, panel discussions, and leadership talk series, GIBS aims to bridge the gap between the classroom, learning, and the ground realities of the business world by inviting national and international thought leaders who are industry experts, academic luminaries, and entrepreneurs to share their vast array of challenging experiences. The, and these talk series are spread over the course of the entire year. Not only do these sessions inculcate a strong and productive relationship between the academia and the industry, but also provide students an opportunity to gain crucial insight into the present market trends, operational challenges by learning from the industry stalwarts themselves, even before stepping into the industry. We have one such eminent personality today, that is Ms. Toyn Ofeso, global educational influencer from Nigeria. On behalf of GIBS Business School Bengaluru, I'm delighted to welcome you all. I'm delighted to welcome you all you know, to this virtual international webinar on emotional intelligence in the workplace post COVID-19 by Ms. Toyn Ofeso, the global educational influencer from Nigeria. Before we start, kindly allow me to say a few words about GIBS Business School. GIBS Business School, Global Institute of Business Studies, a part of Goel Educational Trust, is an exclusive business school. Located in the IT and BT capital of the world, Bangalore, GIBS is an institute of international educational standards. GIBS Business School's PGDM and BBA program are the cutting edge programs with a difference. GIBS takes pride in creating new milestones and recognition as one of the innovative and prestigious business schools of India. GIBS Business School Bengaluru has added one more feather to its cap. GIBS has extended its footprint to feature in Forbes India magazine, the top leading business magazine, as GIBS B School, the new age business school 2021. GIBS Business School is ranked on the, as the 28th best B school of 2021 by Higher Education Review magazine, featured in Livement.com and a lot of other media houses like Times of, uh, Times of India, Hindustan Times, etc. So without much ado, I welcome you all once again to this webinar. Emotional intelligence, today we are, you know, the title of the webinar, international webinar is Emotional Intelligence in the Workplace Post-COVID. Emotional intelligence is the capacity to understand and manage your emotions. The skills involved in emotional intelligence are self-awareness, self-regulation, motivation, empathy, and social skills. Recently, it has become a bit of buzzword in human resources departments across the globe. But researchers are saying it is time emotional intelligence should be taken seriously. Embracing the nuances of human emotions in the workplace have a break and you know, a great pragmatic benefits such as better collaboration and among employees and a happier workplace. GIBS always inspires and motivates our students to practice EI, that is emotional intelligence. It advocates holistic approach in imparting education, a holistic development of IQ, that is intelligent quotient, EQ, emotional quotient, spiritual quotient, that is SQ, and HQ, happiness quotient. With all humility and gratitude on behalf of the management and the fraternity of GIPS Business School, Bangalore, I extend a very warm welcome to Ms. Toyin Ofeso. Ms. Toyin, we are, you know, I deem it my privilege to introduce you to this August gathering. Kindly allow me to introduce you, and after that, you can take over. Ms. Toyin Ofeso is the seasoned education administrator with global exposure a teacher par excellence, a global education influencer. The Exelligent Educational Magazine, United States of America listed 
Toyn Ofeso among the 100 admired people in education 2021 in her special edition released in the first week of February 2021. Toyn Ofeso attended the prestigious Obafemi Oglo University where she has studied microbiology. She has an international diploma in Montessori education from the School of Modern Montessori, South Africa. Teacher's training, uh, trainer certificate from MCI London and PGCE from University of Nottingham. The Enter Enterprise Development Center, Pan-Atlantic University awarded her a certificate in school leadership in 2016. She is currently doing a master's program with you know, University of the People that is in United States of America. Ms. Toyn Ofeso has attended various seminars and workshops in the quest to keep abreast of the latest trends in the education industry worldwide. As an education influencer at Nigeria, she continually gives back to the society through training deliveries. She is a volunteer facilitator for Teach for Nigeria, that is TFN, and the Teaching Network Foundation of Nigeria, that is TTNF. After 15 years of teaching experience, Ms. Toyn is now into education consultancy and teacher parent development. She is the lead consultant trainer, WealthNet Educational Services, WES, and Mexedas Ed Consult. Toyn's personal, personal philosophy of education and leadership is deeply rooted in learning by doing and by walking the talk. Ms. Toyn, GIBS is delighted with your presence and eager to hear about emotional intelligence in the workplace post COVID the topic we have selected. Uh, before handing over to Ms. Toyn, I request the audience, the participants, to type their questions as and when they get the, you know, have queries in their mind, you know, while listening to it. In the chat box, you can type it, and, you know, our resource person will answer, you know, all, all the possible queries at the end of this session. Ms. Toyn Ofeso, all of us are eagerly waiting to listen to you. Over to you, ma'am. Thank you so very much, Professor Lachmi, right, for the introduction. I'm here blushing with my black skin. <laughs> Come on. Thank you so very you much. You look so, so beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. So we dive into what we have today, emotional intelligence at workplace post-COVID-19. Yeah, we have a very short time to go through this, but Let's see how far we can get today. So I'll start off with some facts and figures. Now, let me... So this is a research that is done by the Six Second Organization. And it says that uh, it talks about emotional intelligence during this period of COVID-19. Imagination, risk tolerance, and collaboration is deep in so rapidly. This is another research by Harvard. I'm sure we can read through that, that, uh, you know, it is very important for us to know as leaders and uh, as employees, as students, what the research is saying out there now. The Business School of Harvard demonstrated that EQ counts for twice as much as IQ and technical skills in determining who will be successful. So, and Udemy says that the registration for its coaching courses has gone up 300% in the last few months. What are the reasons for that? The World Economic Forum's Future of Jobs report lists emotional intelligence as one of the critical skills of the 21st century and it's been linked to better effectiveness, relationships, well-being, and quality of life. I'm sure we're all aware of this fact, but it's very necessary we bring it to the fore again because of this time. Microsoft new research on the topic, leaders are out of touch with employees and need a wake-up call. The key question relationship center leaders will be asking or should be asking in the face of this change, what do our people need in order to continue creating value? Remember what a six second uh, researcher said, imagination, risk tolerance and collaboration, they are dipping. So this is tying up with what Microsoft has found out. And the same Microsoft said that 60% of frontline workers, especially those under 30 are in survival mode. 
especially those under 30. And there we have the largest concentration of the people. They, are, they have the highest number in the workforce. So we need to look at that critically. And according to research by organizational psychologist, Tasha Urich, 95% of people think they are self-aware, but only 10 to 15% actually are. And that can pose problems for your employees. Working with colleagues who aren't self-aware can cut a team's success in half. And according to Eric's research, this will lead to increased stress and decreased uh, motivation. So these are the facts and figures, some of the facts and figures that are out there now that all leaders should be aware of. In dealing with our students, in dealing with our workers, we need to be on top of this game. So, and I asked, wouldn't it be great if you could better understand why certain people, events and things bother you at work and how your body and mind react to those sticky situations? It's something to ponder upon. Unlike your IQ, you know, your EQ is ever changing, depending on your surrounding, your experiences, so we have to be self-aware. Very, very important for us as leaders, even as employees and as students. So the question about COVID-19 is, move this up there. Has anything changed in your workplace relationship during the period of the full lockdown? And now with all the restrictions we have all around, yes. I know all of us, nearly all of us will say, yes, a lot has changed in our workplace. And we are trying to cope with the demands of the new uh, the workplace of today. How do you react to the new restrictions and guidelines in your workplace or school? You know, it's a uh, human beings, naturally we find it difficult to change. So with all these restrictions, if you are not self-aware, if you don't have that emotional intelligence in place, it will be very difficult for us to flow with the new restrictions. Is the living a lot more difficult or easier? Those are the questions we should be asking ourselves this period. How well are you adjusting to the new norms? Are your direct reports or line managers making life easier for you? That's really, really very important. How is your emotional health issues being met at your workplace? I would say at this point that if there's any workplace or school level environment that has no department that is taking care of the uh, employees or the students health, emotional health issues, they are out of touch with what is happening in the workplace of today. It is really very, very important that that department is created. We all need that. So that will take us to what we have today. We're looking at the importance of EQ to our career as a leader or as an employee to master the signs of high and low EQ in ourselves and others to create uh, a list of our hot buttons, that thing that you know shift us without us realizing it into the negative zone. Then we have to the focus on strategic thinking and avoiding a high being hijacked by our gut reaction. We'll soon look at a, a short clip on emotion hijacking the brain. So we'll be looking at taking control of our relationships at work and to discover how to create beneficial partnerships then how to exercise control, yet also express ourselves passionately and authentically. These are part of what we'll be touching on as we move along. So, laying the foundation for today's discussion, when we are talking about emotional intelligence, it's not, uh, it's a soft skill, and I say it's an essential skill, but it's not something that we teach directly like that we have to provide an enabling environment 
for us to experience this, to work on ourselves, we read about it. We don't leave it at just reading. We have to provide an environment where we act it out. Look at this picture, You're going for a walk. What's happening here? I ask. Very beautiful picture. The art and the brain taking a walk. In this kind of relationship, striking the balance is what we're talking about. We're expecting for everyone. So as we move along, we'll always be checking back on this picture, okay? I hope we're still together. Yes. Okay, thank you. <laughs> well, now, like I said, we're laying a foundation for the topic, emotional intelligence. We can't be talking about emotions without making reference or providing a foundation for that topic by looking at our emotional brain. Now, everybody is familiar with the thinking brain. And that's what is happening in most organizations or schools now. Our attention is so much on the cognitive development of the child. Most of the time, I say from experience, schools neglect the emotional part of the child. They do a bit of that, but it's left aside as if, okay, the child should take care of himself or herself. But then they get out of school. They're in the workplace now. We're going back to what has been left undone, looking at that essential skill, emotional intelligence. So if we look at the structure, this is like a, the image of the brain, so to say. At the bottom, the first part of the brain that is formed is a reptilian uh, complex that we call the survivor part of the brain. When we talk about freeze, flight, and uh, fight. So that is the primitive part of the brain. In between is the emotional brain. On top of that, then the logical brain will grow. But most of the time, attention, like I said earlier, is being placed on the logical brain. So let's see what happens in the emotional part of the brain. It talks about emotion and motivation. That is where everything comes from. It's responsible for enhancing learning and memory, even though it's not the thinking part of the brain. But if emotion is not right, the learning cannot be enduring. It provides greater flexibility in our behavior and thereby enables us to monitor events outside and inside our bodies. So the brain is really very important for us to study. Neuroscience has said a lot about the brain as concerns learning. So schools, uh, leaders should take cognizance of that and let us expose our students to the knowledge, the basic knowledge of the brain, especially the emotional part. It will help them down the line. Now, what is that part of the brain that is responsible for the emotions that we're talking about? It's the amygdala and is the affective system of the brain. It's within the limbic system. So when we are talking about emotions, emotions, this is the guy that's responsible. It controls our instantaneous emotional responses. When we, are, when we say that, someone has emotional intelligence. It's from this part of the uh, person's brain. Like I said, is the affective system of the brain. Many of our judgments, such as the standing between good and bad, safe and threatening, friend and foe, they take place in this part of the brain. So this is the reason why neuroscience is advocating for educators that you know, you don't lay emphasis on the reasoning part of the brain alone. You have to make sure that the child or the student is in a positive emotional valence for learning to occur. So that's the foundation I want to lay before moving into emotional intelligence, our topic for today. So 
Now let us look at this video and make judgment. Okay. Oh, we can hear the, word, hear the sound. Oh, yes, ma'am. Most of us think of love, hate, happiness, or fear. Those strong feelings we experience throughout life. Our emotions are the force behind many of our behaviors, helpful and unhelpful. Just where do our emotions come from? Our brain is wired to look for threats or rewards. If one is detected, the feeling region of the brain alerts us through the release of chemical messages. Emotions are the effect of these chemical messages traveling from our brain through the body. When our brain detects a potential threat, our brain releases the stress hormones, adrenaline and cortisol, which prepare us for a fight or flight response. When we detect or experience something rewarding, such as someone doing something nice for you, our brain releases dopamine, oxytocin, or serotonin. These are the chemicals that make us feel good and motivate us to continue on the task or behavior. In these instances, the feeling region of the brain kicks in before the thinking part. Sometimes the reactions of the feeling brain are so strong that it dominates our behaviors and we're unable to think rationally in the moment. Our emotions hijack our brain. While many of our emotional responses happen subconsciously, our thinking can influence our emotions and sometimes this can be unhelpful. Just thinking about something threatening can trigger an emotional response. This is where we can manage our emotions with conscious thinking. Our emotions play a powerful role in the way we experience the world. Understanding and regulating our emotions through our thoughts and behaviors can help us take greater control of our brain and achieve our goals. What is your takeaway from that video? If some people could please drop uh, your, your feedback from that video. What is your takeaway from that video? Emotions hijacking the brain. Brain. I'll wait one minute for us to contribute and the chat box. Even though it's a virtual uh, presentation, we could still collaborate. Yeah. What is your takeaway from not able to think properly? Mm -hmm. Emotions have the power to hijack your brain. Yes. Yes. And what I observed is, ma'am, like how the hormones, you know, the, the emotions, you know, deals with the hormones and how, you know, it is, it affects or affects us. Yeah, yeah. We're, we're, we're touching a lot more on that pretty soon. Yeah, my takeaway is, the, is that point where it says that even just thinking about something threatening, could shut down your thinking brain. Just thinking about it, it's not even happening to you. Just thinking about it. So that's the power of emotions. Emo our emotions kick and sometimes makes us act in ways that we had not intended. Yes, Dr. Wilson, when we are angry or sad, we usually take premature beautiful, yes. I agree with all the submissions. Thank you so much for your contribution. Right. So let's move into what we have to discuss, emotional intelligence. If you look at the def definition here, the phrase is very important to me, to blend. What are we blending? Thinking and feeling. You know, like everything in life, there should be a balance. We need our emotions to take decisions, but we should not allow it to overcloud our reasoning. That's the position of neuroscience. Whatever we're doing, our emotions is really very critical. But in a situation that you allow it to run riot, then you are not in a position to take well-informed decisions. And that is what we're about. Emotional intelligence, we've seen this uh, so many times. I'm sure we've come across it in books and studying and all of that. So it is in 
four domains, self-awareness, social awareness, self-management, and relationship management. But the most important part of it is the self-awareness. Because if you are not self-aware, you can't provide solution to what you don't know. A problem identified is half solved. The next thing is to look for solution. So that's why it's said on the left side, personal competence. And what I see, that's self-awareness. What do you know about yourself? What are your strong points? What are your, you know, where are you struggling? As a teacher, as an educator, as a leader, as an employee, as a leader, you must know where you belong at any point in time. What do you say about your social competence? This image will lead us to here. This next image could take us a day to look through because there are so many competencies under each of the four domains of emotional intelligence. Under self-awareness, we have emotional self-awareness. You just have to know about your emotions. What are your hot buttons? Have you ever taken time to, to look through that, to list them out? Because it is in identifying these uh, buttons that you are able to provide solutions. You ask for help. Self-management, emotional self-control, adaptability, achievement orientation, positive outlook. All of these, by the time we take it one after the other, there are so many activities that we could do that will bring you, you know, it's like X-raying you for who you are. But we don't have the time here. We'll get some other uh, activities as we go along to look through these domains of emotional intelligence. But when we're talking about social awareness, we're talking about empathy, organizational awareness, relationship management, influence, coach, and mentor. Remember at the beginning, when we're looking at, uh, at uh, facts and figures. Udemy says that their cost on coaching has increased by 300%. What is happening in the workplace? Leaders are finding out that to manage the employees in this period of COVID-19, we need that emotional intelligence. We need to scale up on that. So self-awareness, as knowledge of yourself, like I said earlier, you can't, nobody can know you bet, better than you. Is accurate self-assessment, your self-confidence, your emotional awareness. So, and I ask, how often do you SWOT yourself? I know we SWOT our schools, we SWOT our workplace, our projects and all of that, but personally, how often do you SWOT yourself? To know your area of strength, to know your area of weakness, opportunities available to you and the threats. It's not only for the organization, even for you as a leader. It's not only for the employees. So you have to continually do this for you to know where you're struggling and the help you would need, where to ask for such help. Like this quote says, many leadership problems are driven by low self-awareness. Let's move to the next one, self-regulation. That's how you regulate your emotions. When it's coming, you should know if you're self-aware. You should know what triggers your buttons, your red buttons, your integrity, your adaptability, your innovation, consciousness. The, the, the quote says, it's, who, it's what happens to you. It's not what happens to you, but how you react to it that matters. You know, there are some people in the workplace that will, because you have such low emotional intelligence, they will set you up and you will lose it. So many people have lost their job because of this. So we have to be self-aware. When you are self-aware, you know what triggers you. Then you can self-regulate. Nobody will tell you that. Next is motivation. Push yourself because no one else is going to do it for you. 
achievement drive, commitment, initiative, optimism, and learning orientation. Now, I've seen leaders, or I'm aware of leaders that uh, they are not ready to move, right? And they want to be there. Those under them that are working with them, they are, you, you know, uh, their reports, they want to move. But because the leader is just there, occupying space, they are frustrated. They can't do anything. So this is what is happening in the workplace of today. Already everybody is going through emotional issues due to COVID-19. So as leaders, we have to be highly intentional to scale up. You have to, you know, you have to be intrinsically motivated to do what is needful. So your employees are not frustrated with the way you react to things and issues in your organization. So you have to move. Otherwise, you step aside. For those that are ready to move, to take charge. Empathy. This is regarded as the most important because you know, without you finding yourself in, this, so in someone else's shoes, there's no way you can feel what they're feeling. And that is what is happening now. So many people come to work on a daily basis. They just come to fulfill our righteousness because of what they are going through. But as a leader, your eyes should be all about moving, you know, 360 degrees, watching your staff thinking with them, communicating with them on a daily basis, checking up on them. That is how you can get them to work. Not a situation that you know your employee needs this help or this support. You are not giving it right there and then when they need it. But when it's, they, they are so frustrated and they're like, okay, I can't keep up with this any longer. Then you want them to stay back. It is not good emotional intelligence for a leader to push the employee to a limit before reacting. In your conversation with your people, you would know where they're coming from. And you have to walk in their shoes to feel their pain. So if you have empathy, you will understand others. You will be able to develop your people, your students. You can put yourself in the position of your customers, that service orientation, and be able to meet their needs. And you'll be able to appreciate diversity because you are not meeting the needs of everybody as a group. You are meeting their needs individually. That is what is expected of us as leaders in any organization today. When we look at social skills, we're talking about communication, which is a bit of a struggle for most organizations. Leaders will be given information, it should be passed across to the employees on time. Maybe there's a decision, there's a project to be done, there's deadline and all of that, but because effective communication is lacking, then who is to be blamed? At the end of the day, the blame is passed over to the employee. So as leaders, all of this stop, the box stop on our table. You have, it is our business to develop our employees. Yes, collaboration and cooperation, managing com conflict, building influence, building bonds, catalyzing change, it is in our interest. For our company to move forward, for our school to move forward, you have to learn the social skills. Because if you have developed that, you'll be very adept at working with teams. You are aware of others' needs and you resolve whatever issues they have before it gets out of hand. Then you are good when you are communicating, you know, eye contact, you know, effective listening skills. 
so many people now they are just listening they are not hearing you so for leaders with good emotional intelligence all of this is within them they're able to listen well and communicate effectively so it's very important i look at this the uh, social skills you see it in most classrooms the best that you, most teachers will do is have the children read it out on a daily basis. But no, they wouldn't learn. They wouldn't acquire or develop such skills. It is in providing that enabling environment for the students, even for your workers, that they get to develop these skills. They must experience it, experiential learning. You have to be purposeful and intentional for the children to pick up the skills along the way because it's not something you teach like you teach biology. No. And that brings us to this very funny uh, cartoon. Yes, I think I have good people skills. What kind of idiot question is that? Someone that thinks that he has good people skills? I hope we're still together. I hope we're still together. Yes, ma'am. We okay. could see this. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Yes, ma'am. Now, before we look at this uh, short video clip, I need us to ask. Uh, give comments so far, what have you taken away or what are you taking away? What points, what is new to you? Could you drop information in the chat box? Anything you want to add? I have a question that is, we'll attempt all questions at the end of the presentation. I have only 40 minutes for the presentation, so we'll attend all questions. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so let's see how far we can push that. We can stretch you in a few more minutes, ma'am. Not an issue. Okay. <laughs> yeah. All right. Thank you. Thank you for the information coming in. Okay, let's move on. Right. I want us to listen to the CEO of sixminutes.com on mastering our emotions. Please jot down points. You will have a lot to take away from this. Yep. Okay. You want to master your emotions. And I'm telling you, the secret is. Emotions are confusing, but with just a little neuroscience, they make a lot more sense. If you've heard me tell the story of why our organization is called Six Seconds, we know that emotions are actually chemicals. I was talking with Candace Perth, our advisory board member, former chief of brain science at the National Institutes of Health. She was explaining to me that emotions are actually messengers. They go running around between our brains and our bodies. She said it's almost like a second nervous system. We have this communication system made up of our nerve cells, but we have another communication system that's these chemicals, and they're produced primarily in our brains, but also everywhere in our bodies, especially here and in our guts and our spines. They even go between us as we start to perceive what's happening with others. But these chemicals going back and forth between our brains and bodies, carrying information and helping us get ready for opportunities and threats. We have this way of understanding information and communicating inside ourselves and between each other. It's just happening. It's like this whole other form of intelligence. Emotions are produced primarily in our hypothalamus. It's like a little factory. And then they go through the pituitary gland, released in our bloodstream into your body. So now let's zoom in and pretend that we are all cells inside of one body. And we have these chemicals that are running around. And remember, they're like little keys. And each chemical has a unique shape and structure. It's going to go uh, looking at the cells. And these, these, these chemicals are going through the bloodstream. And they're looking for a cell where it matches. If it doesn't find one, it looks for another cell. If it 
left a cell which has a matching bond or receptor site. Being at the chemical that's actually absorbed, that chemical is now broken down. So that one little bit of emotion chemical, it lasted for up to about six seconds. These chemicals are going to be left. And then they're completely absorbed, broken down, and recycled. And then this cell is changed. At the electrical set point of that cell is changed, it starts with some new chemicals. Those chemicals start looking for other receptor sites. Bing, bing. And now, pretty soon, we have all of these different cells producing chemicals. And it's like the inside of a pinball machine. Bing, 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 bing. All these cells are activated, and the whole chemistry of our body has started to change because of these evolution molecules giving us messages about the repair of the opportunities and threats that we're missing. Neuroscientists call that a cascade. And what it looks like is that there's a little bit of chemical, and then that cell produces more, and then those cells produce more, and then those cells produce more. Pretty soon, the whole system is flooded with this chemical. And remember, each little bit only lasts for about six seconds. So that means two things. One, if we want this piece of information, that's something that's precious to us, and we need to choose. We're frustrated and we're telling ourselves, I can't believe that person said that. Every time we do that, we're producing more and more and more. And soon we don't have just one cascade, we've got a dozen of them. This cascade process, we actually have different cascades happening in different parts of our bodies. As you're learning to tune into your emotions, Some people carry them in their, their spines. For me, it's up here in my shoulders. So this cascade process interrupt this flood, and we can create something different. We have some choice. And that six-second pause is the key. So because these emotions are part of our biological selves, neuroscientist Antonio Damasio says emotions are the body. Emotions are part of our physical beings. And we can't just put them aside. They're part of what keeps us alive. When you are state of reaction that your emotions are, are growing really fast and pushing you into that flight fight freeze mode where cortical thinking shuts down. Learning theorists call this downshift. And your limbic brain where the emotions see is taken over. So the trick to slowing down and giving yourself a little space to stop that cascade is the six second pause. You know how your mom told you to count to ten when you were a kid? Mm -hmm. That was actually pretty good advice, but as you got older, it got too easy. I'm really mad. One, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I'm still mad. <laughs> so what we're going to do in a six-second pause is we're going to engage our cortical brain, the weakly part on the outside, where we do our language processing and our symbolic reasoning for about six seconds, so that we get the different parts of our brain reset, working mm -hmm. together again. And really, that's what emotional intelligence is all about. and intelligence. And it's going to use your language processing, symbolic reasoning, maybe more math, 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 do six math problems. Or maybe take your favorite chocolate chip cookie recipe. How am I When you're doing these kinds of activities, what you're doing is you're engaging different parts of your brain. One of the keys to activating your emotional intelligence is to remember when state of reaction, what we want to do is slow down, shift our brains, and all the parts are chemicals. They're produced in our brains, but also in our bodies. Like our nerve cells are carrying information back and forth throughout the organism, our emotion chemicals are doing that as well. Emotion. It's affecting all of the living 
the stars and our brains and minds. And these little messages are like keys. They go in. the locks, otherwise known as receptor sites. And we have these receptor sites in our brains and throughout our bodies. They push it. Chemicals go into the cell, into that cell, and then that cell starts to produce different chemicals. As the chemical structure only lasts for about six seconds, but we can see deep into reaction by cascading for a little space. Master those emotions and make the best possible. Hi, I'm Josh Friedman. Thanks for watching. Yeah, we have taken a lot course. In fact, with the information and over the emotions, you know, using this strategy, now we understand how emotions work in our system. When they are released, the chemicals are released, you have to be intentional. Now you know, you have to be intentional to activate the thinking part of your brain. And that's why the, the, the guy has, is advising that we use symbols, we use language, you have to speak it out. Now, the, the, the problem with emotional, uh, emotional emotions running riot in our system is because most of the time we do not even have the language to identify that emotions. It's when you have the language, then you are able to talk about it. In talking about it, you are using language, the power of language to suppress it. Just like he has said. I don't know if anyone has uh, any other takeaway from that short video. One or two people should please drop your point here. To do is to drop, how do we yes, do it now? I'm yes. dropping the, the the PowerPoint with you, so you share with the audience, right? Yes, ma'am. Yes, we can. Okay. So everyone could check because that's the central point of this presentation. Everything we need to know is wrapped up in that short video clip. Thank you for bringing that up. So I'll just move on because we're running out of time. Okay. Now, talking about language, talking about communicating your emotions, this emotional will feeling wheels is really very, is a starting point. If you learn how to use it. When you feel angry, because most of the time, it's either we're angry, we're sad, we're surprised. Uh, you know, those basic uh, language we have to identify the emotions we're feeling at any point in time. When you're angry, it could be because you are let down by someone it could be because you are betrayed. Once you are able to pinpoint that, then okay, it's betrayer. I can deal with it. So you are talking about is you're using the appropriate language. It's easier for you to deal with. You are not just being angry. Why are you angry? So many, many of us are not able to tell. You just know you are angry. But if you sit back within your six seconds and you think about it, what really is the reason for this anger? Oh, it's because of my boss behavior, the way she talked to me, the way she reacted to me. Oh, it's because uh, I didn't meet the deadline. So you are able to put structure into that emotions you're feeling. And once you could identify it, you could pinpoint it, then you are able, you are, you'll be a lot calmer, then you begin to prefer solution. And that is, the content of the six second CEO, the video clip. So this is a starting point for anyone, even for adults, for children, for, for, for students, for teachers, for leaders. This is the starting point. There's, there's so many activities we could do with the wheel of feelings or emotions that will bring home the point on emotional intelligence. So emotional skill tips for employees, because we've been talking about leaders and leaders and leaders and leaders. The employees, they have their role to play too. So employees must know how to channel their emotions correctly so they are heard by their leaders. I once had a wonderful uh, boss. There was, uh, then there was agitation for, I think, increase in salaries and all of that. 
So every one of us were in a large room and uh, our leader was there with us. And it was uh, everybody was asked, if you have anything to say, please speak up now and all of that. So we would know what to do. So people were talking from, you know, the emotional intelligence not in place, everybody because of what they were expecting from the company or the organization. They were talking from every angle. And the leader said something, and I took that away with me that day. That's guys, settle down. You have, yeah, you have something to say. You have a good point, but learn to pass your information across intelligently. And that is key. No, if you allow emotion to be cloud your judgment, you know, you're just talking and talking and talking, but you're not passing any information across to the person that is ready to help you or to the other party. And that is really very important, especially from the employee to, to the leader. Calm down, then pass your information across intelligently. Swatch yourself regularly to be self-aware of your place on the emotional spectrum. Learn and try to manage your managers emotionally. If you look at that, if you are asked to manage your manager emotionally, then there's something wrong somewhere. Your manager has no emotional intelligence. So it is in your place to act and to show example. You have to be the leader in court in this instance. Before you realize it, you see your leader begin to, to shift. But if your leader is giving to you with you know, that low emotional intelligence and you are you know, reacting the same way, both of you are on the same plane. Never allow your emotional brain to hijack your thinking brain. It's a dangerous game to play because there are some things you will do that you can't take back. Do not subject yourself at the same time to emotional bullying. Speak up and seek help. If you have leaders that is ready to bully you, speak up and you know, seek help. Now, these are other keys for, to enhance our emotional intelligence. You, we have to continually reflect. Just how you do daily reflections. Reflect on your emotions. There are some things that would have happened in the workplace or in the school or with your student on a daily basis every day. You must reflect. That's how we continue to get better. But if you, at the end of the day, you just pack everything to the side and you start another day, then you are not working to becoming a better leader. Ask others for perspective. Be observant. We are self-aware. Now you have to be very, very observant. Use the pause. Remember the six minutes pause. Use it before you speak. If you need to excuse yourself from the, the moment, please do. That's emotional intelligence at work. Explore the why. In exploring the why, you will use the emotional will. When criticized, don't take offense. Instead, ask, what can I learn? You know, it takes, it will take a while for you to get to this point, but you have to be intentional to get there. If your goal is to boost your own emotional intelligence or help your clients or your students, you know, you have to build yourself first before you can help others. Practice, 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 says Bariso. Just like anything that we're learning. Consider this quote from Gandhi. Speak only if it improves your silence. There are so many times that you have to be silent. So there's no reason just talking, blah, 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 when it's not going to amount to any good for you. So keep quiet. So as leaders, I need us to run through this vision killing behavior. If you know you do more than, you see yes to more than three of these, then you know your emotional intelligence is still far, far below. Treating people badly, such as not showing people they care, forgetting to say thank you, not respecting people, not making people feel valued. If you are in that zone, please get out. Living by the adage, 
do as I say, not as I do, and not setting good examples. If you are a leader and you are there, please, you have to get out of that zone. Focusing on too many things at once. See, I, I once at, uh, did a course where it was made to understand that there's nothing like multitasking. The best way of doing at that point is switch tasking. Within those seconds, you are just switching from one activity to another. There's no way you can give 100% attention to too many things at a time. Yes, some people maybe from practice, they've given themselves to doing too, so many things at a time. But if you know you can do it, don't get into it, lest you mess up everything. Pushing too hard on the task and forgetting the people. You know, there's a way it is said that before you can ask people for someone for his or her hand, you must have touched the person's emotion, the person's heart. That's talking about uh, emotional intelligence. Not giving clear direction, not taking responsibility for failure. If you're in a team, you're heading a team and the team fails, it is your responsibility to take, you know, uh, you have to take responsibility for that failure. And you start off from there. Focusing on the detail and forgetting to tell the whys or the big picture. Showing little or no personal commitment to the vision. The vision of your school, the vision of your organization. In fact, every leader must, you know, be able to recite the vision by heart. By so doing, you are better able to walk and run with the vision. I've been in some trainings that when I throw are open, some people are looking up and down. What are you doing in that department or that organization when you don't even know the vision of that company? Allowing people who aren't performing the job to remain, mm, it's a disaster for any organization. By the time you have someone in your team, especially in the leadership team, and you have uh, put the person on training, you have supported, and the person is not shifting, that's a bad egg to be removed from your basket. So if you find yourself frequently engaging in these behaviors, that's a good indication that your leader EQ is low. Pay close attention to the three behavior you engage in the most often and commit to working on reducing or removing those behavior entirely. Right, so for a quick check, in the moment of opportunity to enhance your EQ, there are three vital questions you can ask yourself. There are, there are some exercises that come with this uh, particular question, questions. So you ask yourself, does this need to be said? Because there are instances that, you know, if you are not in check of your emotions, you wouldn't be able to, you know, do the six minutes pause to ask these questions. Does this need to be said at all? Does this need to be said by me? Because you are the leader of the team does not necessarily mean that you have to take a decision or be in the front 24 seven. There are some times that you have to delegate some issues to the next, you know, the people around you. The third question, does this need to be said now? Maybe if, if you had waited, your emotion would have gone down and you would have handled the situation better. If your goal is to boost your own emotional intelligence to help your client, then you start from here. That's what Bariso said. If you just notice, okay, this is an example. If you just notice an employee doing something great at work, but remember that he or she made a mistake a couple of weeks ago that you never addressed. Hmm? This is a familiar situation. So bring, and those three questions come up again. You stop and ask yourself. Now this person has done something really nice, but I remember last week, this particular employee or this particular student or the, 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 has done some, so you have to pause. For what is happening now? Does this need to be said? Do I need to react in a particular way? Because if you follow through with those three questions, I bet you, you will find yourself making one of either of these following conclusion. Because 
we have to be very calm to address some situation, you know? The criticism you wanted to give, to share, may not be important as of now. Or maybe if you think about it, maybe if you speak to the leader of that particular employee or the teacher, you might even be getting another picture entirely from what happened then. And if you still, you know, if you have that gut feeling that you still need to talk to that employee, why not wait till after this moment? Give him or her credit for what he has done now. Right. So cultivating a positive emotional environment, I look at this Australian community hospital, what they have done. It's something that I think we should, we should all buy into. Every organization must run a family-centered life. What is happening here? Where we all care together, we value other people, we support our employees, our employees are heard and respected. Every organization must have that culture and gratitude. We have to integrate gratitude practices into our environment, what we do. And that takes us to, as we call rounding up, to fulfilling the Maslow's hierarchy of needs. If you look at this picture, this pyramid, looking at, talking about emotional intelligence, all the one at the base, they're about, you know, emotional intelligence before we can build the higher needs. The biological, the safety, the belongingness. If you look at the, all of this must be happening in our company. If a staff is not feeling, you know, as part of the company because of the leader, then there's a problem. If you look at it until it gets to esteem needs, the cognitive part is not even appearing at all. So the emotional base must be there in any company, in any uh, environment we find ourselves before you can begin to talk about knowledge and other stuff. So we end on this uh, video. I need you to listen and look uh, and jot down points. And you know, I want you to take a lot away from it. But it's really, it's touching. It's something that we forget to look at, to take cognizance of when we are taking decisions and relating with other people, most especially in this period of COVID-19. That's powerful, isn't it? These are the people we have in our workforce, we work with on a daily basis. Some of our students are going through such issues. So as leaders, our eyes, every part of our system will have to be, you know, picking signals from everywhere. And that is where we can attend to the needs of everyone. People are going through issues. The only way we can keep them in our organization and make them happy is by tending to the issues, is by telling them, you know, you know, sending them, giving them that hand of support at every point in time. We are all human beings. And we want to be noticed, we want to be supported, we want to be appreciated. So putting it together, the first rule of emotional intelligence, if people feel attacked, they will defend themselves. Whether we intend it to or not, we are spreading emotions to others. Self-awareness is key. Ask yourself, what are you spreading? Are you spreading optimism? Are you spreading joy? Are you spreading what? Create relationship-centered workforce. Take note of and build on strengths in employees. Intentionally in integrate gratitude practices in your workplace. Hybrid workplace create both technical and relational challenges. To stay connected, we need good Wi-Fi. And we we'll need even better human Wi-Fi. That's why emotional intelligence is essential. So 
more than ever before, today's workplace with COVID-19 and variants is in a desperate need of leaders and employees with high emotional intelligence. Will you make the world a happier place to live and work? Then take charge of your emotions, not just for you, but for you and I. Thank you. So I think we we'll go to questions and answers now. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. It's quickly, you know, we will go to that much. But I should say, I should be saying it was wonderful. You know, it was wonderful to know because we got a lot of takeaways. It, it was, if someone asked, what was the takeaway? I say the whole session was a takeaway. So, ma'am, you know, the thing you could miss, you know, so it was, you know, emotional intelligence is personal competence, social competence. And, you know, it is not what happens to you, but how you react to it exactly. that matters. Push yourselves. No one will push. You know, so push yourselves because no one else is going to do it for you. Mm -hmm. And speak out. You know, speak out, you know, for your emotions. Speak up your emotion. Yes. So, and, yeah. ma'am, you know, we want that meal of, uh, uh, you know, feelings as well, you know, so that we can share it, you know, to the register of mail IDs of the students, you know, because that is very helpful because it's, it, uh, you know, introduces us to the vast array of emotions and, you know, helps us to understand better. True. Ma so, ma'am, you know, quickly, you know, because we are running out of time, you know, can we take some questions? Mm -hmm. Yes, we can take some questions. Do you yes, have anyone that? Yes, ma'am. But you know, Sakshi Tomar asked, you know, she asked, you know, is it okay to remain an emotional person when others say, you know, be practical, you know, that is practical life is more important. What should that be is, the answer? Is it more so, important to, to remain an emotional person? Yeah. Is it important? Is it okay to remain as an emotional person? Or should I be, you know, be practical, you know, others say be practical in life. That means I think she means to say that, you know, don't be too emotional. No, don't, uh, you know, yes. Mm -hmm. I know accepting yes. the, the practical life. You no, know, is yeah, my better. Take, my, yeah, my take on that is just like we said earlier, mm -hmm. striking the balance yes. is what we're talking about here. Mm -hmm. uh, you can't remain an emotional person and forget about your thinking part. So you have to strike the balance. What we're saying is once you are self-aware, you know what pushes your button. So you are ever, ever, uh, you are better to control. You are in control of you shifting to the negative emotional valence 24-7 because it's not even good to your system. It's not healthy for your system, as we have seen in the video clip by the six, uh, second uh, CEO. So yeah. you don't remove emotional person all the time. Yeah, you have your emotion. It is said emotions are embodied. It's part of our being. But what we are talking about now as leader, as employee, as a student, you have to have some control so that it doesn't get out of hand. Yeah, I hope I've answered that question. <laughs> yes, ma'am. You know the yes, you know the being too, it, it is the balancing of both. Like you have to exactly. balance your emotional intelligence as well as the practical. Yes, my next question is from Sanjay Kumar Singh. He says, kindly suggest some techniques to practice self-regulation, regulating emotions so that our thinking is not disturbed because of negative emotions. Okay, okay. So I will have to do that. I will have to send that <laughs> to you when I'm sending the, the slides. Sure. Yes, ma'am. So can we take the next question and then? Okay. Yeah. Paul Abe uh, Bayo, you know, he asked, how do I better deal with a manager with low IEQ? Like we said, a manager with low IQ is, uh, will tend to be, I'm not saying will, will tend to be a bully. And you don't want to subject yourself to being bullied all the time. So you have, when you have tried everything within your power, if you are someone with high emotional intelligence, you have to talk to the person, let the person know respectfully and in an intelligent manner how he or she reacts to issues and how it is affecting you. 
if the person is not ready to listen, I'm sure you will have other leaders in your organization, maybe in your school, that you could talk to, who could bridge a gap between the two of you. And you would have your HR manager to talk to. And that is the reason why I said at the beginning that we must have a, a emotional uh, wellness department. So such people are able to handle such cases. Because if you have leaders, most of the time it's difficult for employees to go to leaders and talk to them. Unless you have, that leader is of high emotional intelligence, then he or she will listen. But in this instance, if you have the emotional wellness department, you could approach them without the leader even knowing that it's to you, they will be able to talk to him, take him out through some trainings and all of that, and that will help. Very true. I Very hope that true. has an answer. Yes, ma'am. That was an excellent you know, answer for them. So they now they know how to handle it and what to do. You no, know, ma'am, it was so you know uh, enlightening, you not know, uh, listening to you. And it was uh, really, you know, it was a pleasant for our mind and ears too. So, ma'am, you know, because of the time constraint, you know, we will stop the answer, question and answer here. You know, so I request the participants to send in your queries, you know, and whatever queries we have. You know, we also, you know, we will send it to ma'am. And uh, you can follow her in LinkedIn. Ma'am is very active in LinkedIn. Yes. You know, so that you can try. You know, so ma'am, I will also send a friend request. Please accept you know, my request. Yes. Okay, ma'am. Uh, I know thanking is just customer. So the thank phrase thank you cannot justify the gratitude we have in our heart and mind. Mr. In our face, so, you know, words, words fall short to thank you for enlightening us with your perspective, your knowledge sharing, you know, everything. Thank you very much, ma'am. You're welcome. Thank you so much for the opportunity and for the platform. <laughs> yes, ma'am. And we have thank yeah. you to all the participants. I'm not able to pick up all questions, but yes, if you look out to me on LinkedIn, I'll be able yes, to give some answers to some of those questions. Like I said earlier, because of the time, we couldn't do yes. much of the activities. There are so many yes. activities we could do that will help us with our emotional intelligence uh, uh, journey. But yes. and you also, can reach out to me yes, for that yeah, sure. exercise on that. Thank yes. you so much. Everyone. <laughs> yes, ma'am. You know, and also, you know, I you know invite you to come over to India whenever it's possible. Visit GIBS, be our guest. So we'd be very happy, you know, to you know, and we can have more knowledge sharing, you know, there, and you we would be the happiest. So. No problem. No problem. <laughs> yes, I'll on behalf of the team of GIBS, you know, business school, Bengaluru. Please accept our sincere thanks and best wishes, and request you to be connected with GIBS. You know, I request. So you, you know, to be with us, you know, forever. Because the connect once made, it is forever nowadays. You know, we, we can. Thank you so much. <laughs> yes, ma'am. I request the participants to follow, you know, Ms. Toyin in LinkedIn, you know, so that, you know, you can get, you know, more interaction with her. You can interact more with her and you can have more knowledge sharing. I thank my team of GIBOs for their extensive effort to be the best. I thank Pradeep sir, Director of Admissions, and Sandeep sir, Head Admissions, for this extended timely planning, help, and support. Thank you, sirs. Thank you, participants, for your wonderful participation and time. Request you to take good care of your health and growth. And don't forget to follow us you know, on various social media platforms. And the e-certificate of this international webinar will be sent to you a registered mail ID by 23rd August, that is by Monday. And not to miss the upcoming webinars, please register as early as possible because it's only for the limited entrance. Our next webinar is on the impact of digital in today's business. It is on 27th August. The time is 5 p.m. by Mr. Saumyadeep Chakraborty, Head Digital Transformation at Vikram Solar, Entrepreneur Growth Hacker and Visiting Faculty of GIBS Business School. Ma'am, thanking you once again. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> Thank you, ma'am. Have a great evening. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye, ma'am. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye. Thank you. Thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you, Ratna, ma'am. Thank you, Mr. Thank, Thank you, Pradeep, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye, ma'am. Take care, ma'am.